All right. We have some of our favorite photographers on, as well as some of the photographers that attended uh, this experience in France just uh, about a week ago. It was amazing. Um, and I'm really excited to have you guys all on, um, and especially to those of you photographers that are on that joined us live um, at my 49-room 13th century palace in France. Um, I see we have um, Evan Siegel. Uh, him and his uh, wonderful wife, Jean, joined us um, on location in France at my castle uh, with these unbelievable top supermodels um, that we shot from Paris, from Milan, um, from all over uh, Europe. Uh, I also... Um, see the great David Duclos. Uh, also great to see you, David. It was amazing having you and hosting you at my castle. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm, I uh, hope you had an experience of a lifetime. Um, I know the great Michael Wylett, um, he was with us as well. Um, and uh, we have a lot of um, amazing new photographers on here live on the webinar. Good to see you guys all. Um, and we're going to be asking, uh, doing a lot of Q&A uh, today and uh, going through and answering questions uh, and also talking and showcasing uh, what it's like to do an epic experience uh, like what we just did at the French Dream Castle. So um, we also have um, some amazing panelists joining us today. Um, and, uh, and this was actually the first massive scale high fashion production that um, we're actually showcasing from inside the castle. Um, and uh, you can, as you can see, we, we have um, the entire castle. It's decked out in over 57, 24 karat gold wall sconces and chandeliers. Um, unbelievable hand-painted art. Um, uh, incredible um, uh, massive uh, frames and um, marble floors, as, rel as well as original wood floors uh, that date back to the 1500s, which is pretty incredible. So uh, good to see all of you guys on. Um, and I know that uh, many of you uh, have either, you know, experienced these epic productions in person with me. Um, and those of you who have not, um, I encourage you guys to do so. Um, so anyway, um, without further ado, uh, this is Kevin Michael Schmitz. I'm a celebrity fashion advertising photographer. I shoot campaigns for Burberry, for Giorgio Armani. Um, I've been published in over 200 magazines, and I also am the TV director, executive producer, and host of the TV show Great Escapes that airs on CBS. Um, now, I have the amazing privilege of uh, owning a 49-room 13th century palace, and I was able to obtain this through a career in photography. So I'm really grateful for all of that. Um, and I wanna showcase some of the secret strategies um, and uh, ways in which I can make these epic productions happen with all of you. And that's the beautiful thing about these live webinars is that I love to show and sh uh, share all of some of these secret strategies. And I'm gonna be talking about some of that today. Some of the um, uh, logistics involved with producing a massive scale production um, in France, uh, bringing in all these top supermodels and stylists um, to give you kind of an idea of how we did this. Um, you know, it's it's this was a six day, five night experience at my 49 room 13th century palace. And um, it was incredible. It was absolutely a mind-blowing experience. And the stay itself, I'd love for our panelists to sp uh, speak about it uh, even more in depth uh, than I do. Um, but um, I, uh, I did want to showcase some of uh, you know what the castle is all about, and also kind of what the experience is like. So you know, not only we're shooting these supermodels, but we also <laughs> had the opportunity to have Michelin star chefs on every single day of the workshop, um, providing unbelievable French cuisine. Uh, we also had masseuses on premise, uh, giving the photographers massages as well as a production crew. And we even had um, a butler serving them drinks in a tuxedo as they're shooting. So the decadence and the level of experience was just out of this world. Um, and I'm really grateful for those photographers that had the opportunity uh, to join us because it was an experience that they'll never forget. <laughs> so it was absolutely unbelievable. Um, and as you can see, here's some of the video of the castle, which uh, many of you guys have seen before. Um, this is the exterior of it. So as you can see, there's also a lot of incredible vistas around the castle, 360 degrees. Um, it is a massive, massive structure, um, 49 rooms, uh, as well as uh, I have a uh, uh, built another a couple of buildings on the property, such as stables, um, which is also another, uh, the, the horse stables are a massive 
um, building as well, as well as the guardhouse. Um, so a lot of incredible um, places to photograph and film, um, and of course to stay, which is pretty incredible. Um, and, and each angle of the castle looks better at different times of day. So we timed it very, very carefully to shoot around the castle um, in the morning, shooting from the east side of the castle, photographing back up into the round towers um, and moving across uh, into the courtyard, which uh, more so by that balustrade and um, this vista point, more through the middle of the day to late afternoon, and then into the evening, uh, either photographing <clears throat> facing into the sun, which is west um, on the other side of those square towers, um, or photographing with the sun going towards the castle. So we're going to talk about a little bit of that, um, uh, a little bit of that in more detail uh, later on as we get to the scenes. Um, now, um, this is uh, an extremely complicated production because we're at a castle in France. And as you, if you guys have ever been to any castles in France, usually they are a bit more in the um, countryside. Um, you know, there are not a lot of um, massive castles that are right in the hearts of cities. Generally, they're more like manor houses and a little bit different. But um, most of the, ca uh, the castles through France, uh, they are out in the countryside. So there are some logistical challenges to producing something like this. Um, such as um, getting the models and stylists and production team out to the castle. I mean, that alone um, is a challenge. Now, of course, you can drive down from Paris, but we also brought in a uh, top um, production team from, uh, we flew them in from London. Um, we had um, uh, stylists we flew in from London. We also had... Um, uh, another stylist that flew in from Berlin. Um, we had models that flew in from um, Milan, Paris, uh, London, Belgrade, and Stockholm. So we had models from all over Europe. And the beautiful thing about shooting in Europe is that you have access to all of these models and stylists from around Europe, which is great because you know, we're just like in the United States. I mean, if you're shooting in, for instance, in um, Miami, um, it's not uncommon for a model to fly down from New York, right? It's not that uncommon. Um, so in Europe, it's not a big deal to fly in a model from Milan or to fly in a model from Berlin or from Stockholm because it's yeah, it's fairly close, fairly reasonably priced flights, uh, fly them around or um, taking them in on the train. So um, anyway, um, now uh, I would say one of my absolute favorite models and scenes was actually from this incredible model um, who uh, we flew in um, that uh, was absolutely uh, stunning. Um, her and her boyfriend actually, uh, the Dolce Gabbana model, and we shot with some unbelievable content. And we did a series of different stories. Now, we shot some stories where they were more period piece. Um, this was direct from our creative brief concept uh, that we put together. We, we essentially put together a creative brief story of how we wanted um, this scene to look. So we came up with some initial uh, concept boards uh, from different um, uh, big editorials. So this is kind of some of the the storyboards that we came up with with concepting with you know big you know opulent dresses from different uh, period piece uh, eras from the essentially Renaissance and Baroque period. Um, so we had this type of story going on and we did shoot an entire fashion story with multiple models um, with the whole um, period piece story, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and then we also shot some more modern um, high fashion apparel um, and uh, we had some like Valentino dresses and such and we shot that whole story as well, which was completely different. Um, and then we also had some photographers who were there that really um, were passionate about shooting uh, more lingerie and boudoir. So we also accommodated them and created some amazing content with some lingerie and boudoir uh, style um, photography, um, both inside the castle and even outside on location around the castle, because the beautiful thing about this castle, since I own it, uh, we can literally do anything we want there, which was really cool because, you know, oftentimes when you're doing something like that type of story, um, you know, obviously it's a little bit harder to do in a public setting. Um, so it's great to have a private location where you can even shoot out on location um, with that type of um, apparel, which is, which is pretty incredible, as well as shooting indoors. 
Um, we also shot some amazing content that rendered more, not just fashion, but more such uh, kind of a look of a high-end wedding look as well. So for you uh, photographers out there that are also wedding photographers, um, this might also uh, be of interest to you. Shooting content like this um, with this top model and creating this amazing content um, with her walking through the castle and having this amazing story, uh, which, of course, you know, if you're a wedding photographer, showcasing content of just any regular average traditional wedding is one thing, but showcasing a supermodel walking through a palace in France with, you know, an unbelievable, um, you know, massive, incredible dress like this, that's a whole different ball game. So it's really, really incredible. And it's something that uh, was really special to showcase. So if you are a wedding photographer, this is another really special um, uh, type of photography that you could shoot uh, that we actually did shoot on location at the castle um, that give you an opportunity to, um, to have that type of branding and take you to the next level. So we did a lot of variety. I mean, we were there for six days, five nights, and we shot this unbelievable story, series of different fashion stories um, from more of the high fashion um, with like Valentino dresses. We did some with the, the, um, the white dresses that could be rendered as like wedding or, or fashion, as well as the period piece stories, as well as the lingerie. So we did do a tremendous amount of content and we had a nice small group of photographers. So they got a chance to really take advantage of that. Um, so... And now producing something like this, of course, um, it all starts with having um, a really great concept. And as you could see, you know, we had a great storyboard and concept of what we wanted to create and uh, really dynamic stories that um, we put together in what I call a creative brief. So it starts with like an inspiration board, then we put it together in a creative brief, and then we start executing it. Now, the cool thing about something like this is um, I can share this with my styling team so that the styling team has an idea of the look, feel, and style of what I'm going for, um, for the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, um, the locations, all of that. And then, of course, um, after I share this with the styling team, we then, of course, have a location. Now, um, in many cases, locations are one of the hardest things to find to have opulent locations like this. However, of course, in this case, we get to stay at the location um, at my 49 room castle in France, and we get to have this amazing experience um, where we are um, uh, creating this amazing content at a castle, which of course is, <laughs> it's really special. It's really incredible to have. Um, so really, really grateful for that opportunity to create this unbelievable content that is absolutely otherworldly. And I get really, really excited um, about this kind of content because when you're shooting something and you're showcasing it to clients, one of the things that's really important, you guys, is to make sure that you're showing production value, right? And production value is very valuable. And it doesn't matter if you're a fashion photographer or even if you are a wedding photographer or portrait photographer, showing production value really adds a lot of value. Showing the opulence, the over-the-top aspect of a location, of a production, where all the details come together for absolute perfection, it really does make a difference. Um, and it showcases to clients, especially if you wanted to shoot for high-end fashion magazines, it gives them a different perception of who you are. Because once you showcase that high-end production value, you're going to be far more likely to get booked on major campaigns, far more likely to get booked on major projects, um, far more likely to have access to the best models, the best stylists. And that's one of the things I was able to do is like, you know, even though I've, I've done, you know, I've done several um, fabulous shoots through Europe in the last few years, but, um, but, you know, I'm mostly an LA, New York photographer. So when I come to Europe, I'm showcasing my brand, I'm showcasing, um, you know, essentially my brand identity, and my photographic body of work and portfolio of large scale production and unbelievable, uh, you know, fashion photography, gave the modeling agencies and the styling agencies the confidence to want to work with us, which is great. And that's what I call photographic currency. So it's something that's very, very important. Now, of course, there's regular currency, meaning, you know, pay whatever the modeling agency is asking, but that only goes so far because a lot of high profile models aren't even going to work with you unless they feel like you're a world-class photographer that they feel super comfortable with and that you're going to add a lot of value to them in their lives. So 
this is what I do is I leverage my brand. I leverage my photography. I leverage um, the styling of my productions and the scale of my productions to get modeling agencies and styling agencies to get really excited and want to work with me. And that's one of the kind of secrets to my success is what I do is every single time I do a production, I try to leverage the, the last production that I've done. I try to showcase what I've done, who I am, what I can bring to the table, why that model should work with me. Essentially, I'm selling myself every single time. And in this, you know, in this way, it opens up a lot of doors because once they see that content, it makes them very, very excited to want to be a part of the team. Now, one of the things I'm most excited about is that, you know, just in the last two years alone, you guys, we've won over 200 photographic awards. And this content alone wows and dazzles a modeling agency and a styling agency. And this kind of content, this was all shot in person at our photographic workshops by our attendees, by the way. In fact, we even have the great Evan Siegel, uh, who is one of these photographers that not only won a tremendous amount of photographic awards, he also won uh, number five in the top 10 fashion photographers of America award um, in the One Island Awards. And um, he's attended several of our workshops and he attended in person at the French Dream Castle. Um, so showcasing award-winning images also adds a huge amount of value to who you are and it adds to your brand so that when you're reaching out to potential clients or you're reaching out to produce a shoot after you already have a shoot, you're trying to you know, set up an editorial, set up a client shoot, and you're trying to bring in top models, top stylists, top locations, having content like this, having the production value of these type of shoots, it really adds to how people perceive you. It really does. And for someone like Evan Siegel to share, hey, I'm number five fashion photographer in America award. Hey, that's a big deal. That's something that people pay attention to. And you can showcase your award-winning images. That's a really, really big deal. And we've won out of the top 10 fashion photographers of America. Uh, last year, we won seven out of 10 of the top 10 fashion photographers of America, which is really exciting. And every single year for the last like four or five years, we've been winning in the top 10 fashion photographers in America year after year, which is really, really exciting. And the reason is, is as you can see these images, each image, these are all shot at different workshops with us. They all have extremely high production value. And that's really, really valuable to have that level of production value. Um, so um, guys, uh, anyway, I'm going to be... Um, uh, showcasing a few polls that I'd like you guys to answer. And one of the things when it comes to production value, just like we're shooting at a French dream castle with a shooting at this unbelievable mega palace, um, shooting with supermodels that were flying in, having Michelin star chefs, uh, you know, come and be the chefs on location for the, uh, for the production, having all the details at that level it really makes a difference. However, it's very expensive to do. So I don't know how much you're allocating towards your shoots, um, but uh, it's something that we definitely recommend that you do, um, you know, essentially uh, invest in your photographic body of work. And a lot of photographers, they invest in their equipment, their new cameras or lighting, or, you know, maybe employees, or whatever. But for me, I strongly recommend to invest in your photographic portfolio because that's the most valuable thing that you have. Whether you're, you've got an unbelievable story that you're shooting at a French castle or whether you're shooting at, you know, at these productions, which there's a shot in New York at the New York Fashion Workshop, which we have happening next week, uh, or we're shooting at the um, Elite Masterclass in Los Angeles that actually happens next month, um, where you can see images here shot at the desert, shot at an airfield, the 1940s fighter plane, shot at a water studio. All these add production value, but they're also extremely expensive to put on. So expensive that typically at a production scale of this level, you're looking at a hundred thousand dollar a day production. So over the course of a five day production, you're looking at a half million dollars. It's a pretty big investment, right? Now, if you don't have a client who's ready to spend a half million dollars with you, which we don't all have, um, a great way to do that is to obviously get involved in these epic photographic workshop experiences because the production is done for you. You're sharing and splitting the cost with everybody involved at the experience. And you're using my leverage to showcase and bring in the best models, the best stylists, the best production in the world so that you have access to the best of the best of the best. So it's very, very important. Um, now, I definitely recommend... Um, please, if you guys could answer in the polls, um, what is your budget for developing your portfolio? 
and attending a photographic workshop uh, to shoot the best images you've ever shot in your lifetime, guaranteed. What's your budget for that? And, you know, a lot of times if it's, you know, if you, if you don't have the budget to shoot a half million dollar shoot, you know, and you don't have a client who's willing to pay it, we have to find other ways to do it. And unless you live in New York City and have access to the best models in the world, the best stylists in the world, and you've got the budget to book all of them for a big production, um, it's going to be pretty hard to do. So that's one of the biggest reasons people take these epic experiences with us is that they have access to the production. Now, for instance, uh, I'm Sunday, so just in a few days, I'm flying to New York, and I'm going to be directing the New York Fashion Photography Workshop that's going to be absolutely out of this world as far as scale of production, okay? So we're booking some of the top supermodels in the industry. Um, we're working with two different Vogue fashion stylists, and we're creating content that is absolutely out of this world in quality and production value. And as you can see, um, here on our website, this is actually shot at our last New York workshop. This was shot with top supermodels from Vogue, um, stylists that were styling for Vogue, for Versace, for uh, Vanity Fair. And the scale of the production, it adds a lot of value. So this is what we're really excited about. I fly there to New York um, and we're going to be directing this next week. So if you guys have any interest in, in, in these epic experiences, whether it's coming to New York or whether it's coming to our elite masterclass in Los Angeles, shoot me a message. Let me know. Let me know if you want to be a part of uh, our team and shoot the greatest images you've ever shot in your lifetime. Um, I also know I have some amazing photographers on right now that have attended a lot of workshops, such as, such as David Gesprek, who lives in New York. Um, and, you know, and also, you know, David, I know we have a, um, I think we have one spot left in New York. So if you did want to join us uh, next week, we'd absolutely love to have you. Um, it's going to be a really, really epic production um, with massive scale production. And the styling is going to be out of this world. So if it's something that, um, you know, if anyone on here wants to swing that, um, we do have one spot open if you want to join us um, next week. Uh, in New York. That's because we had a photographer that's uh, coming in for internationally and they're unable to make it. Um, so uh, we now have that spot available. So if you guys did want to get involved, um, definitely, definitely let me know about that. Um, and uh, we also will have an opportunity to set up a one-on-one -on -one mastermind session about one of our epic experiences. So whether you're interested in French Dream Castle or New York or any of these other epic experiences, please um, take a look in the chat. Um, I am listing some links so you guys can join us and set up a one-on-one -on -one strategy session, whether it's about the French Dream Castle or whether it's about developing your photographic business um, for this year and next. Um, however, we are very, very interested in helping each and every one of our photographers, and we're absolutely dedicated to your success. And that's why we stick with you before the workshops, during the workshops, and then after the workshops to make sure that you guys achieve the absolute, you know, greatest opportunity of your career. It's very, very, very important to me personally. Um, I have devoted myself to photographic education, um, not only with the photography workshop series that I've been directing for 15 years, um, but also um, Photographers University, which is my new brand that we are launching right now. Um, and if you guys are interested in that, we're also going to be showcasing some of the amazingness that we have coming up for Photographers University. Um, and essentially, Photographers University is um, it's it's been a long time in the making. It's something that I have been so passionate about uh, for years now, but essentially not just offering in-person epic experiences, but we're also offering the opportunity uh, for photographers to join a grand network where we give in-depth, ongoing photographic coaching. Uh, we give um, opportunities for you to network and uh, have community between all of our photographers um, that uh, are in our network um, and all of our amazing opportunities and production services. Um, and also um, the opportunity to have um, take a part in all, a whole um, host of incredible virtual workshop experiences and online uh, community and connection with me. So if this is something that you guys have any interest in, in um, we're going to be rolling this out um, over the next month or so, and we are going to be offering this as an amazing opportunity to our photographers uh, out there, whether you've taken workshops with us before or whether you're completely new to photography workshop series, Photographers University is our new 
um, amazing brand. And it's something that I am developing um, a lot of incredible content for, and I'm going to be devoting a lot of my energy and time for to help you guys take you to the next level. Um, the reason I founded all of this, guys, um, you know, whether it's the French Dream Castle Workshop or Photographers University or the New York Fashion Workshop, it's because I did my bachelor's, my MFA to be a professor of photography. And I went into massive debt. I spent over $150,000 in debt and I had no help. I just basically did everything on my own from the very beginning. Um, and you know what? I got out of university and I was like, all I have is a mediocre student portfolio. I have a ton of debt and I have no connections, what do I do? What do I do to be successful in the photographic industry? And I didn't really have any answers. Um, I didn't have any uh, professors or mentors that helped me with that. I had to find it all on my own. And I had to start from the bottom up and I had to just absolutely hustle. And I had to just take the bull by the horns, hustle my butt off. I moved to Los Angeles without knowing a single soul. And I had to hustle to make all of this magic happen. Um, and that's why I founded Photography Workshop Series was because I felt like there is a massive need for high level photographic education that's not only there to help photographers um, understand photography at a really high level, but to be able to give you the opportunity to photograph the greatest images you've ever shot in your lifetime and to take those images and do something with it. Become successful as a photographer. Do what you've always wanted to do and achieving greatness and not having to just, you know, start from the bottom up and just struggle the way that most photographers try to do, but to create content that is absolutely world-class and thought-provoking, conceptual, interesting, creative, and to give you all the tools that you need to achieve greatness. It's really, really important to me. So anyway, that that was what um, you know I founded 15 years ago, and I'm so grateful. We're still the most elite photographic workshop in the world, bar none. Um, I've never heard of any workshop where they're putting on six-day uh, fashion experiences with supermodels um, in uh, castles in France and shooting with this level of production and having Michelin star chefs. There's nothing like it in the world, bar none. So the photographers that got to, to, to experience this, it is, it is next level. So, um, and without further ado, I'd like to actually invite some of these photographers that were there um, live um, at this experience and ask them about this. So um, I know the great Evan Siegel is on right now, um, and he is an amazing photographer and an amazing gentleman um, that I've had um, the uh, the honor of working with at several of our incredible workshops over the last few years. Um, Evan is a brilliant photographer, um, and uh, and also um, he brought his beautiful wife. Uh, Gene. So it was really incredible to have uh, both of them there. Um, and Evan, uh, whenever you're ready to uh, join us with your video, I would love to um, to see your face. Um, but uh, Evan, it was um, an absolute pleasure uh, to have you there uh, live at the castle. I'm also going to be showcasing some of your beautiful images that you photograph. Um, and uh, and Evan, why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, uh, first of all, yourself, um, and also um, uh, about your experience coming to my 49 room castle in France. Sure. Thank you, Kevin. I'm touched, humbled, and honored to be able to do this and uh, was blown away by the experience more later. Um, I've been shooting for a very long time, several decades in a variety of genre. I, I started as a wedding and portrait uh, photographer, and then I branched into wildlife and landscapes. And I've done a variety of different things photographically. And um, a few years ago, uh, we encountered each other. And uh, I decided that I really wanted the best uh, experience in terms of setup, subjects, uh, putting on a production of my own. I had to do it in a rather humble way. Uh, because I just didn't have the budget, nor did I really have the know-how to put together every element of stylist and wardrobe and hair and makeup. I knew what they were about. I knew it looked good, uh, but but putting it all together uh, was something that I really uh, didn't feel that I had the, the wherewithal uh, to do. Uh, plus, having had a formal career otherwise, uh, I really... Uh, 
basically decided that I wanted to take my photography uh, to the next level uh, and to more than the next level. And I have to say, uh, Kevin, it keeps getting better and better and better. I know that's an old saw to say that, but every workshop is better. Uh, the images from each of the workshops has been really um, meet, more than met my expectations. The guidance you have provided, even just little tips for an old shooter like me, have been em enormously valuable. The help uh, that Priscilla and your and your other uh, uh, people have, have provided have been unbelievable. And essentially, um, I've uh, been able to take into account my previous training and experience and all the new exposure uh, and training and experience through your workshops and really come out with some surprises. I didn't think I could be surprised, but I came back from the French uh, castle experience and said, you know, I think I got some really good images and I screened them a little bit. And by heaven, I took a look at them. I've got an entire uh, wedding portfolio, which I did not expect a new high quality one that I haven't had for a very long time because I haven't been shooting uh, weddings. And so many of the different um, setups uh, really were not intended per se as wedding, but in fact, uh, from, from prep, a dress that's around a model's head as she's smiling and getting ready or looking pensive, all the way through to essentially a wedding processional uh, with Bibi and, and Alexa outside the castle and this primping in front of the, the mirror, all of these things come together and tell a story, an editorial story that was completely unexpected. Never mind the pure fashion and, and all of those other multivariate images with all of the different outfits, period, modern, some lingerie. Um, I came away with quite a large number of what I consider high quality images. So the experience from that point of view was excellent. The ambiance was truly another world. And it wasn't just the, the, the fanciness, the butler and the, and the great food and the camaraderie, but it was also the fact that it fit perfectly within the setting and helped mitigate the heat because it was unexpectedly and unusually hot. So you made sure that we shot in such a manner that we got the golden hour and a little bit cooler, and at the same time didn't start shooting uh, uh, at the very beginning so that we didn't have an entire day of heat every day, but we got in a full day of shooting every day. So in, in a nutshell, it was an otherworldly experience for me. And I think the results uh, that I've gotten uh, certainly uh, uh, are, are pleasing me at this point. Well, the content's incredible and it speaks for itself. It's absolutely stunning. I mean, just look at this image right here. Um, and incredible couple scenario. This was a Dolce Gabbana model um, and a top uh, fashion model that has been in like La Ficiel and I think Harper's Bazaar. So you had unbelievable content here with incredible models. And of course, the location. <laughs> the location yes. had so much production value. Um, did you have a favorite scene, Evan, that you absolutely were in love with? Uh, throughout the week, because you were there for, you know, six days, uh, five nights. What was, uh, did you have a favorite scene that you photographed? I had so many, but what I call the Alice in Wonderland scene uh, of, uh, uh, I guess it was Maria uh, in the, essentially the, the path with the sunlight streaming mm. through the trees on both sides, like a tunnel into the, the forever and the model dressed in white, almost a weddingy look, uh, and her with the horse. Uh, the the interaction between the model and the horse, and the and the incredible lighting, which required so little tweaking, uh, even though it was natural light outdoors, you can't control it initially, uh, except for the choice. Yeah, this 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 type of of uh, of, of effect to me. Um, Probably my favorite was were the various uh, images um, and the and the various use of different lenses, wide and and tighter for for her. But I must say that there were uh, so many scenes. The the wedding uh, type scene that we saw earlier that's part of a whole series of dancing and holding each other close and looking at each other and and uh, um, 
that whole feel was that of a pro processional recessional wedding wedding look. So I can't say that that I had one uh, that stood head and shoulders above the other because there were so many good ones. But uh, the one that that created a fanciful Alice in Wonderland feel was probably my favorite of them all by it by a little bit. Th this these images. Yeah, I mean, this is incredible. I mean, this is absolutely stunning. Obviously, one of the most incredible top models. We flew in from uh, from Stockholm, um, a Swedish model. Um, we have horses on premise. Uh, in fact, uh, didn't your wife uh, go horse riding um, during her yeah. experience while she was with yeah, us? Yes, she did. Priscilla kindly took her uh, on a lovely cross-country ride. And, uh, and of course, being an expert at equestrian for Priscilla, it was a uh, very easy. Uh, uh, but Jean loves uh, horseback riding. And so I guess they did well together. Uh, and I was very appreciative that that she was taken care of and exposed to uh, some special times, as well as just being there uh, to watch the photography and and seeing what I did. Yeah, I think she um, took advantage of. We had um, two different masseuses that were on premise at the chateau. Uh, yeah. We had a massage room in the southeast tower, and I know your lovely wife got to enjoy the the massages, the horse riding, uh, the cuisine. It was uh, <laughs> hopefully she had a great time. It was otherworldly. It, it really was. I say that most sincerely. It really was. Excellent. Excellent. And these images are just incredible. This is, um, and we actually, this is, I think, one of the first times we've ever shown this live on a webinar, but this is uh, in the laneways. Uh, we have these incredible laneways around the property. It's, um, we have 12 acres of land there and um, these beautiful laneways covered in ivy that are magical. They actually go right down all, like very, very far down onto an area where there's a Celtic stone from 4,000 years ago. Um, and there was also the um, sarcophagus of the famous General Marcellus from over 2,000 years ago um right next to it so it was pretty cool but um beautiful area to photograph in and i think we were using some pro photo uh b1 lights with beauty dishes on this one because we're in this really um you know it's kind of moody and dark area but it was lit beautifully yeah it was it was it was very very special really uh the entire experience was uh was very special very unique Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, you know what? You made the most out of it, Evan. Um, I think, you know, you captured incredible images and it was also, you know, pretty, pretty awesome to have a Michelin star butler taking care of you and serving you beverages <laughs> while you're shooting. It was. And actually it was, it was more than just luxury. It was critical in the heat, uh, which no one could control. Uh, and and having that there, having the cold drinks and the models were able to partake as well. Uh, it was uh uh, it was very unique. It Absolutely. was like flying the Concorde, which I had which I had done several times. And uh, oh wow, <laughs> well that's impressive. Thank you for comparing it to flying in the Concorde. Um, well, and this is a, a little taste of some of the lingerie um, imagery, which uh, this was a model from Paris, um, and uh, this was actually on one of our luxurious beds. Um, we have these incredible uh, 24 karat gold leaf um, beds uh, that are about $30,000 beds throughout the castle, which is pretty incredible. And um, Evan photographed some amazing lingerie um, on uh, on the beautiful bed. So I actually, this is this is absolutely stunning. Gorgeous work, Evan. Thank you. Absolutely incredible. I say I'm honored. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm really glad we we're able to fit in um, some of the lingerie because that was a special request from you. Um, originally, it was going to be more fashion, but, you know, Evan had um, some, you know, some ideas that he wanted to, to create. So we made it all happen. We made the magic happen. And that's, that's something that's very important to us with Photography Workshop Series is we really want to, um, you know, give the photographers a chance to create something custom, something special. This is in more of a little bit more fashion forward dress um, from uh, some, some, fashion pulled from showrooms in Paris. Um, and uh, this is at one of the entryways, uh, also with that Swedish model, beautiful work. Beautiful work, Evan. Um, and uh, Evan, um, tell us about like, okay, so uh, during the days, it was pretty incredible. What were the evenings like? Because I know like, uh, you know, that was what a lot of photographers really enjoyed were the, the evenings where we brought the giant table for 20 and brought it out to the front courtyard and dined under the stars each evening. That was once again um, uh, somewhat unexpected because of the logistics involved. Because you're shooting in some of those areas, and then boom, 
uh, all of a sudden a magical table appears for a large <laughs> number of, of, of people because everyone was treated well and traded equally. And um, basically these first class meals were, were, were served. And I would say that the, the camaraderie was there. I mean, the photographers were generous with each other. No one was a photo hog. No one got in front of anyone else and got on the way. It was one of the most harmonious workshops I've ever, ever been at when it comes to the photographers interacting uh, with each other. And, uh, and, and really uh, the models were, were very friendly and they got along, seemed to get along very well with the photographers and vice versa. And that was really good because often there's a dynamic tension with the quote talent and the photographers. And that did not seem to, to occur. And I think that the, the ability to just talk with each other before dinner, to talk with each other at dinner, to just interact with each other in that manner, formally and informally, uh, helped that feeling of, um, of conviviality in terms of capturing good images from from great models and every one every one of the models was terrific by the way that's often at a workshop you say well you know he wasn't quite as good but still great she wasn't quite as as willing to take direction everyone was very generous in terms of of having their own ideas and taking direction so um i would say that the the ambiance at night aided in the overall quality of the captures, I think. Yeah. And, you know, to me, that was really special. That was something that I really enjoyed personally was having um, this gives you a little bit of an um, idea of what that looked like dining under the stars in front of the castle on the courtyard with Michelin star chefs, Michelin star maitre d' and also uh, Butler serving you um, incredible French cuisine and taking care of all of your needs. And it was and like I Evan said, it was a very beautiful. We actually had really incredible weather. It was like 90 and sunny, um, almost too hot <laughs> sometimes during the day uh but uh but it was special there was not a drop of rain and we had um incredible weather uh with every angle from the castle and then in the evenings it allowed us to have these magical um dining experiences under the stars that we and not just the photographers but also the models the styling the production crew everybody got to sit and eat and have these amazing meals so it was it was really special it was something that and i didn't really tell all the photographers all this stuff ahead of time i a lot of this was a surprise <laughs> was, yes I, definitely. I like to do that i like to to um massively over deliver at these experiences um this gives you just a little bit of behind the scenes some of these moments having our butler serving drinks uh there's evan and some of the photographers hanging mike out Wyatt, yeah the great david. mike wyland and david um you know this is uh you know, during lunches in the, um, this is in the salon, which has this unbelievable opulent chandeliers and wall sconces and everything and having this incredible French cuisine. It was, it was pretty uh, spectacular. So um, that's, that's awesome. So Evan, um, uh, with the shooting at something at this level, um, how did it feel? Because it, I, I had some comments from some of the other photographers, how they were just like, like Shannon, for instance, that was really wowed and dazzled by the talent because, you know, there's a little bit different level of talent when you get to shoot in Europe. They have different bone structures, um, yeah. the quality of, of top models and stuff. Uh, what was that like photographing with all European talent? I think that it was um, actually, it was better than uh than some of my previous experience sometimes uh some cultures are a bit haughty uh and it doesn't mean that they don't look tremendous and they can't model very well but they're a little bit aloof i felt that all the models were very generous with themselves and that came through in the imagery um, even if a model didn't necessarily think that a particular pose or a, or a facial um, a presentation was perfect for her. She went along with it and did a great job. So I felt that um, it was a, it was an exotic. Uh, it was exotic because of that, um, and a little different, and but a very positive um, experience. I mean, these models knew what they were doing, and I think it showed that they've been published. They've often walked. Uh, which is, you know, you can't make a mistake when you're walking in a show. 
Uh, you could you can do another take sometimes for photographer still photography, but if you're walking in a show, you can't look like a bumbling idiot. Otherwise, you won't be hired again. And all of these models had the very professional. I mean, Alexa surprised me because male models kind of vary in their in their projection of what the role that they're playing. Uh, Alexa was just perfection. He could have been from the you know, the 15th century or the 14th century, or he could be uh, from the 21st century, uh, simply playing dress up. So he he really fit. And he and Bibi made an incredible pair for this type of this type of imagery. Absolutely. And I, in, you know, and it's, it's not bad to be photographing a Dolce Gabbana model that adds, adds some value to the body of work, having recognizable mm -hmm. models. Also, you know, I love this shot. Um, I think uh, th this one is just absolutely magical. Um, just incredible, beautiful story. Uh, obviously the interior of this, this is in the dining room of the Chateau um, with yes. all, all marble floors and then into the salon in the distance. And then this incredible top model with um, uh, this amazing dress. I absolutely love this. There's so much story going on here. Well, thank you again. You know, you have to take a look at the lighting. You have to take a look at what lens you want to use. You have to take a look at what you want. In this case, the idea was too praise, too, too uh, paid spreadish. And, and so wider lens, getting in a little closer, uh, which is not my natural means of shooting, you know that. But I've, that was what I've learned from you, strictly from you and Priscilla in terms of, don't worry about it. Just make sure you're down low enough in the center and get a little wider and you'll get that wonderful breadth of, and depth of effect. And, and I was very pleased. Um, and sometimes you just have to work with it, work with the lighting, work with the the um, uh, with the uh, uh, the aperture, the shutter speed and and the ISO and work with with the minimal post processing you need to do to to capture it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I think you did a really good job. Um, and, and, you know, Evan, you you photograph with these beautiful high resolution cameras. Um, and the, generally, they, you know, they they photograph really high resolution, but they're not the fastest recycle rate. But when you're shooting at the castle, I don't feel like that interfered at all. You got to really take your no. time, didn't you? You really I, took your time. I did. And and really, um, I, the actual the, the newer version, which was just of, of this Fuji equipment was just announced and it's eight frames a second. Wow, nice. And so it will change uh, in, in a positive direction. I didn't feel that I was limited. Uh, uh, I really didn't. Uh, there was not one, there was not one uh, shooting scene where I felt there was a there was a limitation because I like to have those pixels. I like to have that depth of of color and shadow detail and highlight detail. And I know it runs counter to what some people do, um, but uh, it worked for me at the castle. I wouldn't hesitate to do this kind of a shoot with basically any equipment that is decent. Yeah. Well, I, I really was impressed because, you know, I know that you and I, when we've done lifestyle workshops together, uh, sometimes the equipment doesn't go as fast as you want. But at the castle, we had all the time in the world. We had we got to sit and be very, like, you know, intentional about a, each scene. Um, and yeah. I think it really worked well. And everybody was like had tons of time to shoot and relax. And it was a very, like, easy flow. It was one of the best one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life shooting because it was unrushed. The yeah. models weren't rushing. You weren't rushing. Uh, Priscilla uh, wasn't rushing. The, the, uh, the assistants weren't rushing. It, it, it enabled you to really capture the best that you could within the, uh, within the setup. And that's how, how I felt about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was very, very um, carefully orchestrated. Um, and I was very, very proud of what we created. Um, unbelievable content, not just photographic, but also the video content. Um, yeah. and, uh, Evan, you know, we we shot some incredible stuff together, aerial drone, as well as with the with the gimbal shooting with the 8K camera on the gimbal. So that was pretty. I amazing. really enjoyed I really enjoyed doing some video uh, with you and you encouraged it. it. It's not normally my thing, but I really had a ball doing it. 
Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And I, to me, I think it's really, really valuable and really important to have the video because that's what a lot of people are looking for is to have that beautiful video content to, to showcase. And it, it shows a lot of drama and a lot, and it's very cinematic, you know? So to me, it's, um, it's very special. It's very, very valuable, very important to have that in your body of work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Um, well, Evan, I mean, I, I know it's probably hard to beat that, <laughs> but I'm sure that we're going to see you at some upcoming experiences. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I really am grateful for you coming on and speaking candidly about your experience and talking about what it was like to be there at the French Dream Castle and, um, and also, you know, uh, how your wife enjoyed it because she was a, I think that's really important. I just want to, um, you know, emphasize that because she was a non-shooting guest. She, she wasn't a photographer. She was just there. Uh, to enjoy the experience. Um, did she have a good time as well? She had she had a wonderful time and did not feel in any way, shape, or form that she wasn't taken good care of. Matter of fact, she 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 was shocked how well, while everyone was so busy, how well she was taken care of. And 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 Priscilla special mention uh to you because she felt very loved. And and that's a good feeling. So uh yeah, I'm I'm very honored to have taken part in this and also to have been on this webinar. I'm really, I'm really honored. Well, excellent. Well, your work speaks for itself. It's absolutely stunning. Um, personally, I think some of my absolute favorite pictures were those ones in the green dress that we were just looking at. Um, I'm just like, just wowed and dazzled, draw dropped. I hope these are uh, entered in the awards um, because these are the ones that I, I believe will win awards. Um, definitely this one um, uh, without question. Um, this is one of the most incredible fashion images. Um, I, I'm just incredibly impressed with this. Thank you. Um, and uh, and and this was art directed by you, Evan. You were art directing this. You were taking this this lead and and making all this magic happen. And the beauty in the lighting, the beauty in the dress and the location, everything came together. And it's just it looks like a painting to me. Well, thank you, uh, Kevin. Well, again. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot over the last uh, years with in the workshops, despite all of my experience beforehand, it's taken a great leap uh, upward uh, with with your help. And I really appreciate it very much. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you're one of my favorite people to have there. And, and like you mentioned, we had some superstar uh, favorite um, photographers that we, that got to attend this in person. And I know some of you guys are on right now. So it's wonderful to have you, David Duclos. I, I loved having you there. I know Mike Wyatt, uh, Shannon Bright, you guys were just incredible to have. It's such a great, great people that were there and that are on right now um, that uh, I'm, I'm really grateful that you guys got to experience this. Um, and I can't wait to see you guys again. Another an unbelievable story right here. This is shot in the parlor. This is kind of the main, um, one of my favorite rooms in the Chateau um, out of the 49 rooms. Um, but uh, this is um, also where the area where we'd also host for breakfasts and stuff like that in the morning. And then um, we were photographing uh, throughout the day. So it was pretty pretty amazing. Um, but just beautiful, elegant dresses, um, incredible period piece stories, and really breathtaking images. And, and one of the things too, is like, I, I did want to showcase a little bit of the dance side of this, because um, the, the Chateau, if you guys have any interest in ballet, um, the uh, the most famous ballet dancer in world history, Rudolf Nureyev, actually lived at my castle, um, and uh, they built a full scale ballet studio for Nureyev um, on the third level. So um, we, there's a lot of history of dance um, at the castle. So I did want to incorporate a little bit of that into uh, the story. That was fabulous, fabulous. Well, Evan, thank you so much for joining me. I'm I'm really really impressed and proud of you for the incredible content that you've created. Um, and uh, the stories that you told at the castle. Um, I can't wait to see you again at some upcoming workshops. I think I'll probably see you in Newport Beach uh, or upcoming experiences whenever you're in town. I know you're always traveling to Australia and around the world, but when you're in town, I know you're going to be coming to some upcoming experiences, and I can't wait to see you there. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, Evan, and I really appreciate um, you jumping on and speaking about your experience at the castle. Well, thank you for having me and and love to all my fellow photographers who were so wonderful and supportive and terrific uh, themselves uh, at the at the castle shoot. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Evan. We'll see you soon. Thank you.
Um, now, I also have the great Priscilla Evans here. Um, now, Priscilla, not only has uh, she been our lead uh, photographic consultant for the last three years, but she's also the Chatelaine of the castle. So all this magic that you're seeing, all the breathtaking beauty of the castle um, to everything from everything that you're seeing, all of the, the coordination, um, the Michelin star chefs, the dining experiences, the um, the masseuses to the uh, all, everything at the castle, all the, the experiences that the photographers have, um, that's all from Priscilla even coordinating the horses and everything. So she is the master uh, behind all of the the, um, the details at the castle. Um, and I'm really grateful to have her on right now live uh, because Priscilla, and, and by the way, we literally just flew back from Paris like three days ago. Um, but uh, Priscilla, I'd love to hear from you about what the French Dream Castle workshop experience was all about um, and, um, and to talk a little bit about um, some of the details, some of the experiences the photographers had. Um, um, and also, I know there was a little bit of a performance too. You you performed because um, you're a professional violinist, and you performed uh, during one of those moonlit dinners um, above uh, on the uh, the balcony of the master suite and uh, performed some incredible classical music. But um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the experience and what a photographer gets a chance to experience when they come to the French Dream Castle? Absolutely, I'd love to. So I had the privilege of this year being, um, yeah, in charge of the production that we had at the French Dream Castle. And as well as that, um, a lot of the other productions that we have in uh, America. And there's just so much opportunity as a photographer to become a global photographer. And at the castle, it really is limitless. I mean, you get to experience everything from incredible dining and incredible you know, production. But in addition to that, we get to customize everything. And that's the really big point of difference here is that in France, there's unlimited time, unlimited availability of, you know, everything you could possibly dream up as long as we plan it long in advance, which is really the big point of difference there. Um, and with that in mind, if there's creative concepts or stories or something on a global scale that you haven't had a chance to, you know, explore yet or to tell that story in a really, you know, a way that reflects and echoes a really high level production, that's where, you know, a location like this is so fantastic because we do have unlimited scope because, Kevin as the owner allows us to do pretty much anything whereas a lot of locations American or you know elsewhere really wouldn't be okay with that so really this is just the beginning I mean this is just the starting point anyone you know like Evan and thank you so much Evan for all of those wonderful and and very sweet and lovely compliments and it was so much fun to spend you know the week there with you and to go riding through the French countryside with Jean while there's a production happening I've never had that experience before but that was that was amazing that was the highlight of my week. Um, but, you know, this is just, it's a space where really creatives can, can come together. We can build something that's tailored to everyone that attends and we can really push the limits a lot further. You know, we can really, really go for it creatively. And that's hopefully reflected, I think, in a lot of those gorgeous images and that content that is really spectacular. And, you know, for me, I was behind the scenes for quite a few of those scenes. So I didn't actually get to see all of that content until just now is, is actually the first time I've, I've had a chance to view most of those images. They're absolutely stunning and I'm, I'm blown away. So that's always fantastic to see. Um, but the castle, you know, itself, obviously having all of the history and the the, you know, the, the amazing different stories of different people that have been there before and to then, you know, build on that now. It's an amazing privilege to be in a place like that and to play violin, which I do get the chance to do occasionally as well. So um, for anyone looking at getting involved, you know, tailoring this is something we can absolutely do. Making it and giving you content that, you know, video as well as, as photographic content a lot of the video content gets, you know, edited together afterwards and there's so much of it and it's so, um, you know, such high quality content and such high resolution content too that um, often we, we send it directly home with photographers on hard drives. Otherwise we can, you know, edit and send, send later as well the, the shortened versions. But there's so much of that. It's so powerful for your brand to be able to, you know, send that out into the world. It really does reflect being a global brand, being a global photographer. Um, you know, it takes you up, definitely a notch or two in um, in the industry. And I think utilizing video now so 
so important, especially with, you know, AI and, and the developments that are happening there. You can always Photoshop, you know, with images, we can always play around with them and, you know, give audiences the chance to question, oh, is that real or not? Video is a lot harder to, yes, the AI is developing, but it's still a lot harder to. So having a video reel, even if you don't offer it as a photographer, just something I always like to, to throw in there. It's so important because it does add a lot of value. It's a way to value add for your clients to be able to, you know, justify bumping those prices up. Um, and it's also something that you know at the photography workshop series we still do a lot of video even though we're called photography workshop series so there's a lot we can do there there's a lot of content we can develop and no matter you know how many different um, scenes are going on at once and which scene you might be photographing if there's another scene that's being filmed at the same time as a production you know everyone's all involved everyone's you know together and a part of that production so it doesn't matter about who was where when everyone gets 100 access to all of the video that we shoot throughout the workshop which is fantastic but this one i mean the the castle there's so so much more to do and to shoot and to cover so many more stories to tell and um, you know for any of our workshops where we've you know for example Vegas we started I think what with rearing horses and, and owls and then we grow from that to get even more amazing locations out in the middle of the desert and every single year we're, we're growing we're progressing and we're changing which is what your brands should be doing as well. And so the castle, it, it has a chance, um, you know, to be a part of those stories and to be a gorgeous backdrop. And there's a lot of different different stories to tell. So for anyone looking at getting involved in it, you know, next year, we'd love to chat further. And if you've got questions or stories or creative concepts, that creative brief that that Kevin was showing right at the start of the webinar is a fantastic way to, to get started. And it's also a great introduction, you know, for clients as well to be able to showcase that as a starting conversation with a prospective client too. So, you know, this is obviously a lot of fun and a lot of, you know, amazing, um, you know, opportunities for entering competitions and other, you know, sorts of photography. But at the end of the day, if it's about a business for you, then, you know, it's a great space to develop an amazing brand and to market that to the right, you know, people and get in with the right people so that you can land big opportunities. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Priscilla. I mean, you're uh, just an incredible inspiration and you're who made all of this magic happen. So the photographers that got to attend this experience, um, they got to attend an amazing experience because you made the magic happen. So if you guys, um, you know, want to talk with one of our epic uh, photographic um, consultants that are on my team, um, and also if you want to specifically talk with the great Priscilla Evans, because she's also um, manages the castle, uh, we do have that opportunity um, that uh, we are setting up on these one-on-one -on -one Zoom strategy sessions um, with, uh, with somebody on our team. And I do recommend it because it will give you an opportunity to not only learn everything you want to know about the photography work Workshop series and the French Dreamcastle, but we also give you um, amazing opportunities uh, to set up um, to understand and master your portfolio, your business, and to take it to the next level in your photography. Um, and that's something that we give ongoing coaching, and we include that um, with uh, with what we do with photography workshop series. It's very very important. So. Uh, I, I put that link in the chat, um, and I do recommend you guys click on that and set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, strategy session. Um, but uh, Priscilla, um, you know, she's been to almost every single workshop over the last three years, um, whether it's New York, Las Vegas, uh, the Virginia DC workshop, um, Newport Beach, um, Miami, Chicago, and then the French Dreamcastle. So she knows in depth each and every one of these productions and how we make all of that magic happen. And you guys got to see um, Evan's amazing portfolio and images. And you got to see all of the high level of production, uh, which is why his images look as amazing as they do, because you have these you know, incredible animals, incredible um, top supermodels, incredible styling, and all of that comes together because of the scale of what we put into these productions. We put so much energy, time, and resources to make these magical experiences happen. And that's why we are the most elite photographic experience in the world. And that's why our photographers like Evan Siegel, um, you know, come back to these experiences many, many, many times because they're going to have not only an amazing and fun experience, but also a tangible body of work of award-winning images um, to have that master portfolio that they can showcase 
uh, to potential clients. Um, or if they just want to do it for fun and enjoy it as a hobby, that's also totally fine. Um, you know, we have plenty of photographers that do that as well. Um, so no matter what your stripe, if you're a wedding or portrait photographer, whether you're a commercial photographer or fine art photographer, um, or you're shooting boudoir or you're shooting, um, you know, any even product photography, um, or you're just a hobbyist, um, we work with all different levels of photographers to give them experience of a lifetime. Um, so uh, you guys, um, uh, we also are opening this up if you guys have any questions in the Q&A. We'd love to um, answer any of them. We've got uh, a great uh, opportunity because you've got both myself and the great Priscilla Evans on. Um, one of the questions that I often get asked is, um, uh, you know, what is it actually like being on set at these workshops? Um, and, and I did want to, you know, answer that one because... You know, Evan talked a little bit about that, you know, how it was very, very relaxed, absolute control. And that's the cool thing about what we offer is that there's no time limits on you photographing. Um, we manage the production, but essentially you get to art direct and direct your own scene and you get to walk on set just like you're a Vogue fashion photographer and you get to photograph the greatest images of your lifetime. And you get to create these moments that are thought provoking, that are world class, and you get to take your time. And if you don't capture the most perfect scene, I make you go back and do it again. I make you photograph incredible content, um, you know, where right out of camera, it's magical, just like this one, right out of camera not even retouch. This is literally just a screenshot of a back of a camera. But when you create these scenes, and you can even see the 24 karat gold chandelier on the inside of the castle in the main entryway, um, you know, with the beautiful vines and, you know, the, the incredible top models right in front of the castle, creating content like this. And if it's not right, I will make sure the photographer goes back and photographs it until they capture the best of the best images that they've ever shot in their lifetime. It's extremely important to me. Um, and of course, what it's like on set at the French Dream Castle is you have um, butlers serving you drinks and taking care of all of your needs. Um, you know, you can uh, just every little detail <laughs> is taken care of or enjoying massages and having these amazing experiences, um, incredible dining experiences um, under the under the stars. It is a magical, magical, uh, magical experience. Now we have some incredible experiences coming up from the New York Fashion Workshop that's happening next week. Um, we are shooting both in studio and at unbelievable um, estates um, on location. Um, and then following that, we have our elite masterclass happening in Los Angeles, which is the most over the top and um, unbelievable uh, workshop in the United States that we offer. Um, and that's happening in um, October. Um, and that is our last most epic workshop of the year. That's really, really exciting. Um, Alan Titel asks, what kind of lighting and modifiers do you generally have on set? Great question, Alan. So each workshop's a bit different, but as far as like, for instance, the French Dreamcastle experience, um, we shot with pro photo equipment, all shooting with B1s, uh, pro photo B1s, um, and which are portable battery operated light heads. Um, and then we're creating um, uh, beautiful light modification with beauty dishes generally. Um, and um, next week in New York, we're going to be having a mix between um, uh, not only battery operated, but also the um, uh, a pro photo a packs that plug into the wall so that we can um, have um, a very, very fast recycle rate and be, you know, shooting away in studio as well as out on location. Um, and we're going to also be shooting with like um, six foot octobanks, um, as well as um, strip lights, as well as beauty dishes and seven inch reflectors. Um, and then what we, what I love personally, uh, more than anything else is shooting with giant scrims and bounces. Actually here, you can see some of the lighting equipment right here in front of the castle. Um, you can see the giant scrim um, in the background. There's like an eight by eight scrim uh, with a bounce as well as, um, so you either do eight by eight foot scrim with a one, one quarter stop um, silk, or I do um, a giant silver or white. Um, so in this case, as you can see it set up, there's a uh, giant silver set up and then there's a beauty dish um, on, uh, that's actually a portable beauty dish on a B1 and then another B1 uh, without a modifier. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the equipment. Um, in um, New York, we're gonna be shooting with a tremendous amount of lighting equipment. You know, we'll be shooting with like eight to 10 lights that we'll have on set. Oftentimes about four to five lights per, per set. We'll usually have two sets going simultaneously. Um, when we're shooting at a lifestyle workshop, Alan, um, like such as Newport Beach, it's going to be all manipulation of natural light with giant scrims and bounces. Um, it looks a lot more natural and real than using strobes. So we always do that. 
but to capture those beautiful images that um, Evan was showcasing with uh, with the horse and everything, um, that was all shot with those beautiful B ones um, and uh, and creating really carefully um, curated and art directed scenes where the lighting is very very nuanced. Um, very light and um, you know not over the top. Um, and then the same thing goes with um, shooting indoors, which is even more complicated. Uh, but that's something that we also uh, incorporate as well, really regularly at um, all of these incredible, incredible productions. So um, you know when, uh, in fact, let me pull up a, another scene with uh, with the horse because this gives you an idea of what that looks like with the Pro Photo B1 um, shooting out on location. So, you know, beautifully lit, uh, lighting up the model and the horse um, with a uh, with a B1. Um, but uh, making her pop from the background. Absolutely um, beautiful. So incredible content. Um, very, very impressed and proud of what my photographers were able to capture and create um, at this incredible workshop. I mean, it was totally over the top and it was something that I'm extremely proud of having these top models, having these unbelievable sets and creating content that will just literally last for an eternity um, in our portfolios and give each and every one of our photographers uh, the opportunity to advance their photographic career to the next level. And that's what this is about, is creating the greatest images of the lifetime. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm really glad that um, you got to jump on and learn about producing a big fashion shoot in France at a 49-room palace. Um, you got to showcase and see all the amazing images and video shot by our attendees. Um, and you're able to kind of understand what that experience was all about uh, at the French Dream Castle and what you can expect from the Photography Workshop Series and Photographers University. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I can't wait to see you guys on the next one.